Welcome back to the Total Focus Podcast, episode number 19. I'm your host, Paul. Our special guest this week is Caitlin Cox. She is the newly crowned Ms. DC America 2019. And we're so happy to have her on here. You better stay tuned and listen to this great interview. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful for you having me. Yeah, well, congratulations on your new title. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's still very exciting. Um, have you started working on on your uh, your dress yet? Um, because you, the- I haven't gotten to pick my gown yet, no. But I get to go to Regalia in Orlando next week for Miss America's Outstanding Teen. And while I'm there, I get to pick my gown. I'm so excited. <laughs> I've heard Orlando is a big place for um, for pageantry dress. Is that that Pacific Dress Company, or is there several companies that? Are- they are my sponsor. Uh, you know, to be quite honest, I don't really have a ton of experience doing a lot of gown shopping um, or visiting Orlando. So I am grateful to go enjoy some sunshine and do some amazing shopping and meet some of my other new Miss America sisters. That should be a wonderful experience. I, When it comes to dresses, I, I tease. I actually talked about this a little bit in my interview at Miss DC. Uh, I, I say my good friend uh, Jude quoted balling on a budget. And so I've kind of stuck with that. Uh, pageantry kind of taught me uh, how to be a good consignment shopper. A lot of my gowns I buy secondhand. So this will be my first time getting to go uh, by myself, pick out my own gown, potentially design it. It should be wonderful. Do you have a, a style or, that you've always dreamed of that you just haven't gotten to wear yet that you want to try for? Or, or You know. I, I don't. I'm actually going in with a really open mind. I know certain cuts and colors look better on me than others. I, I really do love bright colors. I like a sweetheart neckline, but I'm not dead set or sold on any of those. I just want to keep an open mind, and when I put the right dress on, I'll know it. Well, with the new system um, and the emphasis of being in that dress longer, you definitely want something that's going to um, – show off uh, your beauty, but you also want to be able to move in it naturally. It's not just for that one, you know, walking down the you know, the stage or the aisle, you know. You oh, certainly. When you're making such an investment, you want a piece that you can not only feel comfortable in, but confident in and show off uh, your beautiful gown and also your beautiful self. And with the 2.0 remake for the Miss America system for Miss DC this year. It was the first year that we did our social impact initiative statements while in our gown, which was such an amazing moment for me. I was in this beautiful gown that I had picked out. I felt confident. I felt strong. And I got to talk about that silence is not compliance and and give a quote on that, which was really powerful for me. And like you said, great to stay in that beautiful gown just a little bit longer. Well, the, the new system is so more about who you are. Do you appreciate getting a little bit more time to, to actually talk and and not just uh, be a pretty face? And is that something that is more of your strong suit that you actually get to be more of the, the person and not just the face? Do you, is that, does that help you? Hmm. Well, I don't think that the Miss America system ever was just about a pretty face. And I don't think this is a new system. I think it's just a revamp in changing the form of the competition. And I am really grateful for that opportunity to talk a little bit more on stage. So this last year at Miss DC, it was my fourth year competing. But it was the first year that I got to talk about the Me Too movement on stage and silence is not compliance Uh, For those of your listeners who don't know a lot about my organization, it is an organization that helps rehabilitate survivors of sexual assault. And I myself am a rape survivor, so I take my social impact initiative and my own organization very seriously in the work that we do. And it was great to have an opportunity in the new format of the pageant or the competition, rather, to be able to talk about 
the work that I'm doing and, and how important it is that we listen to survivors of sexual violence. And so in, in that aspect of the new form of competition, I'm, I'm really grateful for that opportunity. And I assume that's your platform then. Yes. Yeah. Or social, my social, social initiative. Social. Yep. So we, we rehabilitate survivors of sexual violence. We advocate for victim first legislation, both on Capitol Hill and with DC council. And then we also nationally um, educate grades five through 12 on how to uh, properly respond and how to also prevent sexual violence. Well, I mean, that's really important to make sure that people don't feel, um, and people are still putting out the word that you know these things are still happening and that it's not you know after after it happens you still feel devastated and you need to have someone to talk to about it and there has to be something to do to stop it so we appreciate that you're putting out uh, the effort to to really go Congress and really do it and being uh, the representative of DC it's really um, really important that you take that step so have you been to congress up there yet or to capitol hill I have. yet Good. i have yes and and thank you for for bringing that up so i actually have established a partnership between silence is not compliance and the victims right caucus on capitol hill which was instrumental when legislation was out in regards to a back page and having that removed. I also do a little side work with uh, Shared Hope International. It's an organization that helps with domestic minor sex trafficking. So uh, similar similar motives, a uh, little bit different mission, um, but, but same drivers. And so I did some work with them too uh, in regards to back page and then also with education in schools on human trafficking and kind of combined that was silence is not compliance and sexual violence in its entirety and so those partnerships through going through schools not only were we able to get to congress but in schools we were able to get to other organizations with similar minds so in addition to shared hope i actually have made partnerships with groups like the dc urban debate league that allows us to come in during summer camps and talk about sexual violence and brown girl wellness that's another one out um, in the dmv area so it's just been amazing being Miss DC now is providing me many more opportunities to go and talk to people that can have impact on legislation, on the way that we do things in our schools with kids when it comes to sexual assault. So I'm, I'm just, I'm so hopeful and, and so, so grateful. Uh, and I hope that the Me Too movement doesn't and isn't just a flash in the pan, but rather something that we can all continue to rally behind. So right now, what in Congress do you hope that you can elect change in that that is necessary for rape, uh, rape victims that, mm -hmm. that, that isn't currently <clears throat> a law or, um, or a rule or, or like what, sure. what do you what what change do you really? we need to, to enact. Yeah. There's so much that can be done, but okay. one specific thing that, um, that I can just kind of draw on my own sure. experience from sure. giving, sure. giving okay a little bit that. of, yeah, yeah. So giving a little bit of background, um, I went to the police, uh, the day after I was assaulted and it was, it was a really ho horrible an experience in that I was uh, dealing with a trauma that I had no experience in. But then I also had police officers asking me questions like, what was I wearing? Well, did I say no out loud? Did I say yes? Did I give consent? Which I didn't. And I did say no. And I wasn't wearing things that were provocative. Uh, but, but not that any of that really should matter in the first place. I didn't consent. And, you know, I was attacked. And that was just the beginning of a two-year process. I had a, uh, my, my assailant, he pled guilty. He served 18 days, didn't have to register as a sex offender, and they lowered his sentencing from rape to a misdemeanor in sexual misconduct. And the reason that they did that, where I'm going with this, this is a long-winded story to get to where I'm going. No, it's is, not a long-winded. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't, no, 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 no. no it's not a long-winded. Because I'm kind of well, what, when you when you because what really piqued my thing is when you said they dropped. I don't know how you can go from rape 
a lower thing. So let let's so, so tell me the yeah, story. So, yeah. so this is why this is and this is why I would argue that right now in our current systems, we treat victims of of sexual assault as tools for prosecution rather than victims deserving of rescue. And what I mean by that is that a lot of our uh, district attorneys, maybe ADAs, whoever's trying a case, only wants to take the cases that they're going to win. They don't take every case. They want to make sure it's a sure thing in the bag and that, you know, flicking somebody on the forehead is is better to take the flick on the forehead than to risk nothing happening, you know, at all and them having a loss but also having the potential to put somebody in jail or to make them register as a sex offender, whatever might be considered, uh, you know, a, nor- a normal sentencing. So it's not that it doesn't exist in our laws that that could happen, that somebody could go to jail for rape, that somebody, you know, should have X amount of days in jail, but it's not, it's not happening because what we currently want in our system is the win. And we're willing to win for pennies when there's a million dollars. And and I think that if we started treating people as survivors that are deserving of rescue, if we started focusing more on rehabilitation and what the survivor needs versus getting somebody 18 day, days in jail, then that would be a good place to start. That would be a good place to make a change immediately. I just wanted to take one second from this great interview and talk about our sponsor of the week, Mid-Atlantic Video and Photography Productions. No matter if you're planning a wedding, a special event, or you just need an amazing headshot, they are the team to get the job done. You can reach out to them at 443-422-3830. Again, that's 443-422-3830. Or you can go just go right to their website at mavpp.com. Now let's get right back to the show and listen to this great interview. I I absolutely agree with you. Uh, I, the the little thing, the little I know about the the criminal justice is that the the position of the ADA is that's an elected position, right? The head head, or, or that's appointed by. Is that, is, I'm really well, bad. Okay, so I took, I actually, I took some time to. Um, so how's that, how's that, so, it's because this is the one comment I would, or, or suggestion. Is that, mm-hmm. is his, is his job appointed or is that the job that is, or is he voted into office? As, as I understand it, I believe dir- district attorneys are voted. Right. I so, could, uh, yes, but assistant, so ADA. Right. An assistant, assistant district attorney right. isn't. Is, is, under, is under him. So, yes, as I understand, they aren't. Because I used to shadow an ADA in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, that worked domestic violence cases. She's not an elected official. So my, this is what just came to me. Why can't there be a separate department that isn't judged by the public and is not judged on any matter except for helping the victims and it is only their sole thing is to prosecute um, rape cases. Mm-hmm. Does that, does that make sense to you that maybe there should be a category of ADA that only does rape vi- victims. They only do rape cases because for some reason that, that I think would help to solve a lot of, of the issue that you're having because they're, they're not playing a one up that, they're going to get in trouble for not getting the victory. Well, there there already are no, there already are people that are working those specific cases. There my are. mind okay. Yeah, so my mind kind of goes a bunch of different places with that. The first thing I thought about when you started asking that question were sane kits. Um, commonly known as a rape kit, but it's it's also okay. known as a sane kit. And so sane kits are the DNA um, and evidence right. associated that you know that people go through. They sit on shelves right now. It, there's so many cases that have been reported that, that are backed up. Like I had told you, you know, mine was straight shot, clear. He said he did it. The evidence said he did it. Mm-hmm. Like he pled guilty. It still took us two years to get to court, and it was guilty from the beginning. 
So I, I, for the people that are going, you know, back and forth in their court cases that had, you know, the decision made in their favor, a survivor, but then it got appealed. I, I don't, to be honest, I'm not sure I have the clear answer of, as to what is right, other than we're not handling things right from the beginning. And no, you're I'm absolutely going, right. You're, where, you're... Well, like where, where I'm going with that is we're so focused and I'm guilty of this. I am. When I first started silence, don't is ever. Not okay, first of all, this is something where you you should never say you're guilty of. Okay, the, the, there's no, no no no. I will totally like. No, <laughs> you're not guilty. Okay, we have a very well. well I mean, I, I I definitely have had times in the past, and when I first started silence is not compliance, I was like. People who are guilty need to go to jail longer, you know, and I was so focused on somebody should be punished for the crime when what I should have been focused on and what I'm driven by now is making sure that the survivor, the person that was wronged, is just getting what they need to heal. Sometimes that doesn't mean going through prosecution. It was a lot. It was hard. And the only reason that I really made it through the entire process going through you know, the grand jury, getting him indicted, going through all that. The only reason I could do that was because I had such an incredible support system. And the fact is, is that so many survivors out there don't have the family, the friends, or maybe a supportive university like I had to have have their back during that process. So that's one thing I hope to do through silence is not compliance is to let people know that they have somebody on their side that has gone through something similar, they're not alone. But also that healing should be the main concern first, and that doesn't always mean going through the prosecution process. It's different for every single person. So the rehabilitation resources that I needed, things like counseling, you know, uh, academic resources because I was scared to go to school, things like that, is completely different from what somebody else might need, which might be medical, could be counseling, it could be transitional housing out of a really bad home situation where somebody's being abused in their home. It's just different person to person. And I, I, I think that that is something that I want to help focus on is that even though we are helping change legislation on the Hill and locally, the, the first thing we do before we advocate is we rehabilitate and we focus on those survivors and getting them what they need to make the next step. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I, I can tell it's a very emotional thing for you and it's, uh, and it's still very hard for you. So we, mm. we you know, I really appreciate you having an opportunity to, to talk about that. Um, and anything we can do, on our end, we'd love to, to really help you. Um, so please let Thank us. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I mean. I kind of, I totally derailed us from the Miss America no, you, conversation. I know that we no, wanted you to didn't. talk a little bit. No, you didn't. This, that, that's why. For I, me, they go hand in hand. They do go hand in hand. Um, you, I, I, I know that they don't call it platform, but your platform has mm -hmm. a really important thing that tells you who you are. And you're. Um, initiative um, is is much more um, tied to who you are than just um, you know your volunteering. This is something that has changed your life. So it's really important that you help other people. Um, by you helping other people, have you been able to feel more um, yourself again, or are you feeling better about yourself? Or, um, cer certainly to a, to a certain extent, you know, it can be really, it can be really hard to, um, to reopen wounds mm -hmm. and on purpose, but, but I've become stronger and better at doing it because I know when I show my scars, somebody else heals a little bit more and then full circle that in turn makes me feel like the trauma that I experienced almost has purpose. Like something that was bad for me, it's okay that I went through that because I was able to help somebody else, either in prevention or help them get resources that I had that they don't. Um, and that 
all in its entirety has helped me become, I wouldn't even say uh, back to myself or ba back to normal. There's, there's no such thing as going back to the person that I was the day before I was assaulted, but I'm a heck of a lot stronger than I was then. And I wouldn't change that. And, and maybe that life experience that you have today wouldn't have been able to help you win uh, Mrs. DC. So maybe that life experience, even though it wasn't something I'm sure you would ever want to go through, had helped you um, with the judges because that, I know the interview process is really important. You have to be able to, t to explain to judges why you deserve, um, and, you know, being able to talk on stage and having, mm -hmm. you know, your platform and everything. So, I mean, um, well, yeah. I hope I hope it didn't that that me being assaulted didn't help in any way of me becoming Miss DC, but rather the work that I've done since to help other people in our communities and nationally and globally uh, with their assaults and their experience. I think that that shined through to the judges. There's something to be said between the difference of this is what I've done versus this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And then this is what I've done. And this is what we're going to do. That's kind of the perspective that I took in my interview at Miss DC. Mm -hmm. No, I, you're you're taking a negative and you're putting it into a positive. Is is what I'm. Saying. Absolutely, yes. So, thank you. I know your time's limited, but I'd love to just get your um your short um uh, exciting for for nationals. I know <laughs> they haven't announced the location yet. Is that correct? You don't. Do you have a, That's do correct. Have, I don't. I don't have a location or a date yet, okay. uh, but the preparation has already begun. I, I said from the moment we got a stage, right. you know, Miss America could be next week. It could be five months from now. We're going to be ready, right. and uh, I, I still feel that way. I, it's it's going to be great to get a gown next week, but just in kind of concluding our conversation and in in the spirit of preparation for Miss America. Besides silence and non-compliance, my other main focus is Children's Miracle Network Hospitals uh, in preparing uh, for Miss America. So at my time in Miss DC, I've raised over $45,000 for Children's Miracle Network. Wow. It's an organization that I am also very passionate about. I know we haven't got to talk a ton about it, but I have some very personal experiences with CMN Hospitals. I've been fundraising for them since I was a young child myself. So it's, it's very exciting to be a, a part of a program that believes in children's hospitals the way that I do and the amazing medical work that they're doing. So I, I would love to keep you up to date and your followers up to date on the fundraisers that we're doing for CMN before Miss America. And of course, welcome to visit my page if you go to the MissAmericaForKids.com website and look up it's backslash contestants backslash KC for DC or just look up Caitlin Cox on there. You can find out about some fundraisers we're doing and also look at the um, a letter that I've written to some of our donors and uh, visit SilenceIsNotCompliance.org to learn more about my organization. Yeah, and guys, I would really appreciate you. Everyone that um, is a subscriber on the show and also a listener, please make an extra effort to help around um, all these organizations um, in, and uh, are absolutely worthy of your time, money, and effort. So you should definitely reach out to her. Yes, thank you. And if, you know, I, I know there's, there's only so much time in the day and only so much money that can be given if you just want to share it on your facebook or your twitter or your instagram there is an easy click to add to your page button on both of my websites uh, for cmn and for silence is not compliance so please please take five seconds to check it out and click yeah guys if i i agree with her um <laughs> thank if, you if you can't do any uh volunteering or, or uh, showing you can at least put it on um, your social media and tell your friends. So, awesome! Thank you so much for your time and for letting me talk about. Oh no! Thanks for coming on the show. I, so I wish you had. I wish you had more time. I, I appreciate you coming on the show. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Caitlin, for coming on the show and telling us all about your platform. And you're clearly excited for nationals. And 
I really appreciate you explaining how difficult it is to prosecute a rape case. Um, I was not aware that it was that bad, and I hope this really gives people that have had to go through such a horrible experience know that it's not just you. Everyone has to go through this, um, and I hope that um, within time, with you being Miss DC, that you can um, affect change and hopefully make it better for everyone. And I really encourage that if someone does something horrible like that, report it, report it, report it, and let that person get what they deserve in life. On a som- more somber moment, we really appreciate you coming on the show, and we are rooting for you. We truly hope that you win um, Miss America. Don't forget, this show drops every Thursday, so please subscribe to us on iTunes and on YouTube. And on YouTube, please give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Tell us what we're doing, good or bad. Give us a nice comment. And stay tuned.